Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about how you can compare probabilities. Uh, this actually is going to be a two-part video. The first video is going to be a situation where you only have two probabilities to compare, and the second video will be what happens if you have more than two. Uh, as usual, there's a link down below to a PDF version of these slides. Now, I just want to first remind you all the different tools that we've talked about over a number of different videos, uh, but what you can do when you have a single probability. So that is, you have a binomial model for some data, and you have an unknown probability of success theta. And now, there are a lot of different tools that we've talked about that you can use. So you can get a p-value for a specific uh, null hypothesis. You can get confidence intervals for that probability of success. Uh, you can be a Bayesian uh, and get a posterior distribution from that posterior. You can get uh, posterior estimates. You can get credible intervals. You can get posterior model probabilities. Uh, that look sort of similar to the p-values, although we've discussed that before. And you can also get uh, posterior probability statements, like the parameter being less than a particular value, for instance. Uh, so now we're going to turn this around and say, now instead of just having a single probability, what happens if you have multiple probabilities? Right? That is, what happens if your model looks like this? You now have a, a binomial observations, but notice how they're subscripted. And so what you want to be thinking here is maybe that there's two different groups. That's G1 and G2. And so you have some data Y1 from group 1 and Y2 from group 2. That Y1 will be the number of successes for group 1. And Y2 will be the number of successes for group 2. Uh, there's no reason that those two groups have to have the same number of attempts. So you have an N1 and an N2 for the number of attempts for group 1 and for group 2. And now, most likely the question, or the reason that you're collecting these data, is to say something about what the probability is for group 1 and what the probability is for group 2. And so you have two different values for theta, at least plausibly. Now, it's key here to understand that these two y's are independent, right? So you can't use this as an example for uh, modeling elections or voting for elections where you're modeling for one candidate versus another candidate because those are not independent. Because if somebody votes for one candidate, they can't vote for the other candidate that's in a competitive race with them. Okay, So the key is that they have to be independent. All right, so now we have these two different probabilities and you're interested in the relationship between this theta one probability and the theta two probability. And so we can go and do sort of the same kinds of things that we did when there was only a single probability, but things change a little bit. So in particular, if you do a frequentist approach, it's based on this difference in the asymptotic sampling distribution for that difference. Uh, but you can do p-values for say a test of equality. You can do a confidence interval for that difference. If you're going to go the Bayesian route, you can calculate a posterior distribution for that difference, create a credible interval for that difference, uh, for each of them individually and for the difference. You can calculate posterior model probabilities. Uh, you can calculate posterior statements about probability of one parameter being less than another parameter. So this hopefully looks very much like what we had on the previous slide when we only had a single probability. Right? Details change, hypotheses change, but overall the mechanics stay pretty much the same. All right, so let's get an example here so you can sort of dig your teeth into what we're talking about. So let's suppose that you have a manufacturing process and there's two different specific processes that can be used to manufacture a particular item that's of interest. And you are perhaps interested in which of these two processes are better in the sense of being able to, to generate uh, the product that is within specifications more often. So what you might do is you might run a trial first with one process, then with the second process, or maybe you're able to randomize it more than that. Uh, and you'll have some data here that says how good process one was and how good process two was. So for instance, process one had 135 successes out of 400, sorry, 140 attempts. Process two had 216 successes out of 230 attempts. And now you want to say something about whether process one is better than process two or not. Uh, I'm going to do all the coding. You're going to see a lot more R in this slide than I normally show. Um, but basically, we're going to set up the data. So here's the data and set as a data frame. That's what we're going to be using going forward. Uh, one of the first things you might want to do is a, uh, a test, a hypothesis test, for equality of those two binomial proportions. Um, and so here we have it. Right Here's some code using the prop.test function where now the arguments to that function are the columns in the data frame associated with the successes and the attempts. 
Uh, R knows now that it has to do a calculation comparing these two different probabilities as opposed to when we use prop.test with just a single observation of successes and attempts. All right, so what do we see here, right? That p-value for that test of equality was 0.41. As a reminder, a p-value is a statement about how incompatible your data are with the null hypothesis. Here, the null hypothesis is that null model, really, that says that the two sets of data are binomial. It says that you have uh, equality of those binomial probabilities. And it, because that's not very small, there's not much evidence here that your data are incompatible with that model that has the equality of those proportions. Uh, it might have been of interest to take a look at the confidence interval of that difference. So that confidence interval is down here. It, it ranges from what, negative 0.02 to about 0.07. So that's the difference between these two probabilities. You'll note that it includes zero. So that is that the difference being zero is consistent with these data. And because that interval includes zero, we know that the p-value, even before we looked at it, was going to be greater than 0.05 because we have a 95% confidence interval here. All right, so that's what you can do from a frequentist perspective. I mean, there's other things you can do as well, but that's what we're gonna focus on here. Uh, in a Bayesian analysis, we need a prior for both of our parameters. We're going to assume that they are independent uniform distributions, which is the same as a beta one one distribution. And it, because we've assumed independence in this particular distributional form, we know that the posterior is another beta. Uh, each of them is gonna have their own posterior, one for theta one and one for theta two. The posterior for theta one is going to be a beta one plus y one and one plus n one minus y one. And then the posterior for theta two is just gonna be the same thing, but replacing the one for the two. All right, so you can use these posteriors, right? To calculate posterior expectations, to calculate posterior credible intervals for each of the individual parameters on their own. Um, but what we're gonna do going forward, we're gonna show you those uh, posterior densities, but we're also going to take a look at how you might calculate probabilities like this. Like what's the probability that theta one is less than theta two given the data? What's that posterior probability? And you can interpret that as a statement about your updated belief given this model and these priors. All right, so let's first look at those posteriors. Here's an example of those two posteriors for those two different processes, uh, indicating what the posterior, sorry, yes, yeah, what the probability of success is in those posteriors. Uh, and again, this is where you could find posterior expectations, posterior credible intervals for each of the two independently. All right, but now we wanna go farther and say something about those two parameters and compare them. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw samples from the posterior distribution. We're going to calculate that difference in those samples, and then we're gonna analyze those values. All right, so here's the code to do it. Uh, the code up top is the code we randomly sample from each of the posterior distributions. That's where that R beta function comes in because the posteriors are beta, so we randomly draw from those posteriors. Uh, and then we calculate the difference. And that line right there basically says the first simulated value for theta one minus the first simulated value for theta two, and then goes through all the different simulations. Simulated values, maybe I should say. Uh, and from those set of simulated values, you can calculate uh, estimates of quantities of interest, like a posterior expectation for the difference. That's just the mean of uh, that those difference samples. You can calculate a 95% equal tail credible interval using the quantiles of those simulated values. You can calculate a posterior probability. So this is, I think, the interesting one. What's the probability that theta one is less than theta two? Well, that's the probability that the difference, theta one minus theta two is less than zero. So we just calculate that mean diff less than zero. And we find here that the posterior probability is a 0.16. Okay. All right, so that was all showing examples from both a frequentist and a Bayesian perspective about how you might compare two probabilities. In the next video, we will talk about what you do when you have more than two probabilities. Hope to catch you there.